volunteered to bring us our program today. Since uh, we've got judging coming up and some of you have your cars in there and these are some of the common problems that we see in uh, judging and mistakes that are made and so forth and he's going to kind of walk us through that today and uh, explain everything to us. So with that, Patrick. An alternate name for this one is Don't Let a C3 Master Judge Who Edits Judging Guides Critique Your Work. Okay. That. Now, what I don't want is for you to go home and say, all he did is complain about the judging we did on a car. That's not the point. Uh, it's not very often we have people literally come and give us and correct our papers, so to speak, as if we were in school. And that's kind of what I'm doing today. I took the judging done on a car at our last chapter meet. And, of course, I'm going through the car to get it ready for the regional. And I found, should we say, a few errors in the judging. So what I've done is made a presentation. Nobody's going to get named. Don't worry about that. I'm not going to point out anybody. Um, but what I want to do is show you what went wrong. Now, I, it's, you can feel free to ask questions. Let me know your thoughts. Not everything is written in stone. Okay, this is just my observations. Um, like I said, I've been judging cars for quite a while and over the last several years along with Gary we've been hammering out judging guides. So right now I'm doing the 73 to 74 along with Tom Russo and I'm sure 75 to 7 will follow. This car being that we're talking about being a 77. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Second edition. This is ancient. It's good for kindling, that's about it. <laughs> this is probably the most important book here that very few of you own. Now this is the this is the seventh edition. There's an eighth out now, so it's a different color if you've got the new one. I think it's got a color. But the idea is the same. Okay. If you don't have the reference manual, why did you come to the meet? And then you can't complain about the rules either. We don't really have a sponsor, okay? <coughs> Two things I've found recently, I just thought I'd throw out there for people. First one, I picked up a flashlight, I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago, that I've been using for judging. And I went back and forth with the company that sells them and makes them. And one thing even other judges have said is you want to try and get one that has good color rendering. Okay, a lot of LED lights are way too blue, if you will. Definitely too white, okay? So I actually went back and forth with the company. Now, one of the most popular, best, if you will, LEDs is the one I've got up there, the 4000K, I don't know how you, if it's Nichia or Nikia, beats me, 219C. Right now they got a 92 color rendering index which is really high. I mean, I realize for us it's a second flight, but for color rendering it's actually very high, okay? A lot of LEDs are, if you're lucky, in the high 70s, okay? So what I did is picked up this particular flashlight, and Richard and I are gonna test this one uh, at the regional down in Greenville, South Carolina, coming up shortly. But anyway, this one happens to have three LEDs inside of it. Um, and with the reason I bought this particular model that I talked to them about the actual LED unit is replaceable. So if a new one comes out, you just swap it out. Um, you can buy a blank one, if you will, and then buy whatever insert you want. It was only $5 more to buy their base, if you will, LED. So I bought it with that and then bought the additional one that I have here. So I, you can't tell much with it, just using it here. But I've been playing around with it working on the 77. It really does work quite well. So I'll let you know what happens. But you can get a lot of flashlights with this particular LED if you wish. But the nice thing is, I mean, it's the one that photographers use if you, uh, to get accurate color and light. So if it's good enough for them, it should be good enough for us. Second thing I found working on that car, and this is, I bought two different ones to play with. I think this one was my favorite. For all of, you know, $15.99 from Amazon, when you have a, a very bright LED light on like this that you use as a headlamp, there's nothing like it working in the engine compartment or working underneath the car sometimes. Um, anyway, I've had, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly, see? Anyway, rather than holding a flashlight trying to work at the same time, even though I'm in a barn with a lot of light and everything else, there's nooks and crannies you cannot see in. You put this on, suddenly I've got 
a lot of light and I've got both hands free. And the nice thing is you can move it in and out and focus it. So I can have a wide beam or a narrow beam. So anyway, two little toys that I picked up for working on Corvettes or judging Corvettes as the case is um, that I thought I'd let you know about. Now this page is hopefully stuff you've all heard before, but of course, you know, where the rubber meets the road as you'll find, it doesn't always match. Um, originality, CDCIF, configuration, date, completeness, completeness, installation and finish. Okay, Condition, rust or corrosion, aging is the nice way we like to put it off when we're judging. Wear, cracks, <coughs> damage, fading, scuffs, dents, scratches, or pitting. You notice dirt is not in either category. That's a separate line item, whether you're going to Bloomington or with us. Originality is not, as you can see, to flip it over. Same thing, it's originality is also not missing paint. Condition is not overspray. Okay, it's not missing pieces. Backwards installation, yes, we saw all this on this car. Cast blast, that's not a condition issue, it's an originality issue. Dirt or a service replacement. Standard deductions. You all know they exist. How they're applied is not always correct. Um, and again, they're in the judging reference manual. Paint, fiberglass, cylinder cases, batteries, tires, exhaust and or stainless items, glass and windows, and headlamps. I think there actually are more in the newer one. My guidelines for owners. Number one, know your car better than the judges. Okay, buy the judging guide, download the judging sheets, review your car. I mean, you're spending months, years with this car. Even if you just bought it, you're going to spend a lot more time with it than a judge who has an hour to hour and a half to look over your car and move on to the next one. I mean, imagine those of us in Bloomington who have 32 minutes to do everything and walk on to the next car. You have all kinds of time to look at your car. So there's no excuse not to know what something at least looks like. Whether it's correct or not, you should at least know what it looks like on your car. And then number two, know your deductions ahead of time using that including standard deduction expectations. Um, like I said, buy the reference manual, read the guidelines, and be prepared. If you come in there and you don't know that your uh, radial TAs are going to be a complete deduction on your tires, you should have. Again, if you're coming to the meet and you haven't looked it up, don't <coughs> complain. For the judges, as Gary often says, let the car talk to you. Okay? You see a car, with very, that looks very original or very low miles and you compare it to the judging guide remember the judging guides do have errors what's the yeah well except our new ones but anyway <laughs> but let the car talk to you you see a car um, with like Matt Beltowski and I've been going back and forth his 77 was built almost the same day as the one I'm working on so it's really nice to be able to go back and forth and look at the parts and, you know, as he jokingly said regarding something else we're going to see regarding the rear-view mirror, he said the only thing correct in the judging guide is the fact that it says it's attached to the windshield. <laughs> so, um, like I said, read the judging guide, but be prepared to allow for variance. Again, this is an 18-year-old judging guide. There's, there's a lot we've learned in 18 years, and a lot of cars we, have, we didn't look at 18 years ago we should have. Um, Another one, be specific and descriptive with your comments. I realize sometimes we don't have a lot of room, but you'll see some of them on, that I'll show you today that you're just like, what does this mean? And that's what I said too. Um, be consistent. There are times for the exact same thing. You'll see somebody deducted a point off originality, and the next line they deduct it for condition for the exact same problem. Um, and then the last one, as Terry says in a different way, there are no untouched Corvettes. So on one hand, let them talk to you, but yeah, there are none that are untouched, no matter how low the miles are. We're going to start when the owner signed in. It's just a point of interest. Um, I copied all of these just from the NCRS website. I downloaded the sheets and cut and pasted the proper sections. So we're going to where the blank ones come from and why on occasion it says, you know, draft or whatever <coughs> else in the background, that's where it's <coughs> Anyway, the scoring summary. Does anybody see what's wrong with this one? Can't see that far. Glasses. <laughs> but, I see for all zero miles. Yeah. 
Can anybody explain to me how, unless his car lives in the annex, it was trailered zero miles? This is a case where, don't be afraid, to, I mean, we don't, as a chapter, give out longest trailer distance, but we, we might for the regional. In which case, somebody help the owner and remind him that he did trailer, in this case, at least from Wyoming, Michigan, so he gets 150 miles to his credit. So that's one of those cases where we can help the owner even before we've started judging. All right, interior. We'll start with an easy one. Speedometer intact, radio, block off plate, center console, instruments. You see that radio in there? <laughs> no, yeah, that. <laughs> I don't, again, don't write that in the judging sheet, but. Exactly. So what is it? <laughs> yeah, an aftermarket. Okay, so what do you do? This one should be moderately easy, right? Aftermarket, non Delco, AM, FM. That's a full deduction. Okay, that's easy. Battery and caps 30 on originality, 10 for condition. The caps were 73 to 5 only, that's why it says that. All right, so a Delco battery. There it is, sitting in the car. <clears throat> the, the owner's a GM dealer. He went to his stock and pulled it off and stuck it in the car. It's that easy. So what do you do? Anybody see what's wrong with this one? Mm -hmm. Originality? Yeah. Condition. <laughs> it's a brand new battery. Yeah. 50% deduct for condition. Battery is a standard deduction item. Like I said, even the judges need to read the rule book. Alright, batteries. No deduction, there's 10, there's 30, there's 50, and there's 100. So which one do we go with on this car? 30. 50%. 50%. Delco, correctly sized, service replacement with appropriate type of side post configuration. So the owner gained 10 points on this because the judge screwed up. And it even says, originality, originality, and someone took it off condition. Seat, shims, and bag is the top line. Owner's packet and contents is the next line. So sheet, seat, shims, and bag, missing. Full deduction. Owner's packet and contents only has owner's manual. One point and one point. Is that correct? All right, first item. In 75 and early 76, the fiberboard tray contains a white cloth bag with a yellow drawstring. We do not know what, at what VN in 76 this practice ceased. It says it's missing. What's the judge missing? didn't read the manual. It never came with it. So the judge, I mean, and I realize at a chapter meet we all judge years we're not familiar with. But the, I literally took that right out of the judging guide. Owner's packet for judging, and again, it needs to be reformatted. formatted. I counted approximately 14 items that should be present. Credit not given for items not present, and this includes condition. So what happens is he basically got credit for the one of the 14 items that he had, but again, because it's not present, he gets, you can't give him a half a point, so he got one point in condition. So this is correct. If it's entirely missing or entirely wrong, he would get zero. So he had the owner's manual, he's got something. He has a lot more of them now, but anyway, this is the one time you give partial credit, if you will. There's something like that when, again, think of it as a um, completeness, really. Okay, um, just like CDCIF, okay? Is it complete? Well, no. We can't, but we want to give him something. We're nice, we're nice people, generally. <laughs> so we give him one point on the originality, because that really is pretty close. And then one of the condition because you can't give them half a point. So that's the, one of those cases where you actually, there's a fair, you know, fair amount of items in one line and you deduct for what's not there. So this is probably the one place you'll frequently do that because you'll often find cars that don't have items. Okay, and in 72 I think it's easier. We've got like six or eight items. Like I said, he's got, he's got 14. And again, it's kind of the judge's manual is kind of a mess as to what actually belongs with the car, but I counted approximately 14 for this car without air conditioning. There's more if you have air. Mirror. Rear view mirror. The judging guide, if you can believe it, says mirrors are black grain vinyl with a black rubber trim and a black plastic day night lever. Original mirrors have made in USA printed on the bottom next to the lever. 
On the top of the mirror between two rivets is printed gla Guide Glare Proof. Seems pretty descriptive, right? All right, so here's the mirror in question. A black vinyl. Okay, allegedly made in the USA in the bottom next to the daylight lever. Can anybody spot it? Not you don't worry, you're gonna. You can get within two inches of this thing and not spot it, Tom, so don't look too hard. <laughs> I was told that when this was judged, people were even taking tape measures and measuring left to right to see if the mirror or and or windshield had been replaced and it was off-center because it didn't match the judging guide whatsoever. So I have another picture that I took. <laughs> so I, last month I went to Chicago to look at another 77. I did look at other cars too, but <laughs> amazing. This car was built at Thanksgiving. This car is much later in the year. They got the same mirror. Neither of which conforms to the judging guide. By the way, Matt's doesn't either. Like he said, the only thing that's correct about this is the fact that it says it attaches to the windshield. After that, the description is completely wrong, at least for a 77. Exterior. Body color. I know. Oh, boy. Uh -huh. And body paint. <clears throat> All right. So I've got pieces of the car. I will tell you in real life, some of this is extremely difficult to see. Just think of that as you go on to the second, the slide after this one, okay? If you look close, this is the same line. You can see a little bit of a, where somebody buffed the fender peak, okay? There's, believe it or not, a tiny bit where they, they didn't go through. They just made it thin right about there. Same thing on the fender here. It's just a little thin. <coughs> I trust. I have to sit and look at this car extremely closely under fluorescent lights to see these, other than the fender peak. Okay, just realize that as we go to the next slide. So what do we get on this car? Body color. It's fine. It's the original paint. So one would think they got it right in St. Louis. <coughs> Body paint. On originality, eight points. Two on condition. On originality, it says burn through passenger side, burn through rear of roof chips and on the headlights. <coughs> Can anybody explain to me where the originality is missing on this car? Yeah, there's no description of it. Well, it's the original paint on the car, other than what came off in the guy's buffing wheel. If anything else, 20% deduction for what I showed, and again, I'm not, I'm not kidding, what you see in real life is not that much different than what you just saw in those previous pictures. So, like I said, maybe was some of it missing, but if anything else, would that not go under a wear and tear? Right. Mm. Okay. Was that conditioned because somebody removed the paint? Again, taken direct, directly from the manual. In judging the originality of an area, such as body paint, I like the fact they use the same area as an example. A successful judging does not mean that the existing paint is that which was originally applied, but does imply it appears as though it could be. Uh, generally, a component part judged to appear as a complete original item will receive full originality scoring credit regardless of its condition. So when I look at the car, again, this is my personal, I would say it's a condition item because it's been worn. You know, it's just like if your alternator gets a little crusty or you get rust on the frame. That's my analogy. I can see where, like Terry said, well, is it that it's missing, you know, in such a way that it's not the original paint there anymore. Well, it's a pretty small area that's not original paint anymore if we want to look at it that way. <coughs> anyway, just one of those things to think about as we judge. Yeah. Front grills and hardware, front license recess, and license plate frame. <coughs> what do we have? Well, that's the most interesting looking frame, isn't it? Yeah. And then, if you will, that, that's as good of a front license recess as we get on the 77, so I, I took a picture of it. I, I'd really faint. Sorry about that. There was a limit to what I could scan. Front grills, it said aging and rust. Okay. Front license recess, not typical frame. Okay. But the next line is the license plate frame, extra screws, and not typical screws. I'm not sure why he got double dipped on frame. License recess, it's got a little bit of corrosion on it, and if you were mean, you could take off one of the two points there, but I'm not sure how you would take off a point for the frame on the second line when there's a separate line for the frame. Does anybody else know what the other kicker is? 
77s didn't come with license plate frames. <laughs> so what you saw was completely legal because it's what the owner put on the car. Antenna, mast and ball, base, nut and gasket. All right. So what do you notice? We, could ask, we should ask Jeff. What do you notice? There's really two things to notice on this. It's rusted here. Who knows why? Anyway, that's rust. And there is a little paint there. We'll say it was not typical factory, but obviously did occur. Rust, overspray. No. Can anybody explain to me what? Yeah. So, I mean, we joke about no as a comment, but <clears throat> again, that's why I say keep your, keep your comments clear because, again, here I am, if you will, third party trying to figure out the car to get ready for judging. What's this? <laughs> okay. The other thing is technically overspray, if you will, would be an originality item because it's a finish. Now, looking at this car, it's, I think at the factory had some extensive respray done, and I would suggest that tape line is probably from St. Louis. But it just, you know, just one of those things when we scratch something down, like the word no, you know, it, it's, it's like putting reproduction. Doesn't tell the owner anything necessarily about what he's looking for, especially some of our rookie owners. They need to know what's, you know, what's different about a reproduction as opposed to the correct item. Gas lid door, gas cap, rubber boot and drain, rear grills and hardware, 73 to 5 only. So what do we notice? There's the drain, and because I have the benefit of a lift, there it is underneath the car. <coughs> All right, the gas lid door, bezel hardware, one point aging. Rubber boot and drain, installed backwards. Yes. Do you know why the judge wrote this? No. Because they're used to earlier Corvettes where, in fact, the drain is in the front. 77, it goes, or should I say, it's in the back. In the 77, it goes right there and exits right there with a special clip holding it in place. Yeah, that's exiting right by the muffler. Yes, it is. Took it as a condition. Really? Yeah. Tires. It should be easy, right? All right, no originality deduction. Four matching OEM tires as described. Again, you've got all your, again, notice originality deductions. These are not condition deductions. 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 75, or 100. 77 should have the infamous Firestone 500s. What do you do with this? 100%. What is it? I can't tell the brand. What's the Firestone? Firestone Super 125. As installed by the dealer, Firestone dealer, during the Firestone 500 recall. Yeah, because these tires were not available much longer than the late 70s. Anyway, so as you can see, 6 out of the 30 on this one. Different ways you could go. So you got the 20%, okay, under the differ slightly from original. Okay. This one, I honestly, I think almost any deduction would be correct. So, this, I mean, this is one of those things you're going to run into in the field. What do you do? And this is one of those, almost anything other than 100% is probably correct. Now, what was the comment written? Um, OEM manufacturer, but not typical factory. Okay. So you really could even go with a 60% deduction down here, which is the current day OEM brand service replacement or equivalent. And now it's, you're right, it's not current day. So I, I think they gave the owner the benefit of the doubt on this one. This is a factory recall. Yep. Doesn't make any sense. I think they're judged under the CDCIF just like anything else because, for example, I don't have a picture of it, this car still has the silver horn button on it. He never did the recall on it. Yeah. All right, mechanical. Air cleaner base, hood seal assembly, or flexible and flexible, plastic and flexible air duct, or the air filter element. Here we have what's on the car. The original one, which you'll notice, really there's two things to notice. Number one, and it, you, the owner literally does not know who he, he, the car was a demo and he bought it directly from the deal, dealer as a demo with like 3,000 miles on it. Okay, so it was a year old, he can tell you who he bought it from, etc., etc. Somebody ventilated, shall we say, the air cleaner. Yeah and added holes here as well as here and of course you'll see some missing paint here so how do you judge one like this it's a condition issue it has been damaged 
that damage is condition. Okay, it's missing paint. That's not the missing paint is not an originality issue. What you the paint you see there is original. Missing metal. Yeah, we could say it's missing metal, but it's been damaged. Okay, damage falls under condition. Whether you think it's an improvement or not, <laughs> so the judges did both on this one. Two on originality, two on condition for the missing paint and the holes. Now also notice the next line, hood seal assembly or pl plastic and flexible air duct, which is right here. All they wrote was replacement. I don't know why. In other words, here I am preparing the car for the next event. What do I fix? What, what does correct look like? What's wrong about the item that's on the car? I don't know. That's one of the, again, when you write something down, make sure it's explicit as to what's wrong. Carburetor. Carburetor, date, return, spray. All right, so here's the original carburetor as judged, if you will. There's the carburetor last week. Carburetor, three on condition, aging. Dirt is not aging. Now, I'm not saying there isn't any, I, again, I've gotten up close and personal with this carburetor, obviously. But again, dirt, as you saw on the left hand, is not aging. So one of those things to think about when you look at, for example, a carburetor or anything on the engine that really gets grimy, could this actually be cleaned off? And if the answer is yes, then it goes into the cleanliness section at the end. So anyway, just one of those, one of those things to think about, especially on a carburetor, because they tend to look just like this very frequently on driven cars, is that actually aging or is it dirt? All right, fuel pump. This one's a beauty. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. Uh -huh. It is. Really? So was everything else inside the engine compartment. I've, I've said to the owner, whoever touched up his engine when he put the water pump on has cost him a lot of money. So what do we notice? Overspray. Overspray on pump. That part's correct. You took the wrong points. You took the wrong points. CDCIF, last is finish. I think you could probably, on the way this used to look, even take both points for finish. But it should be an originality deduction, not a condition. As far as you can tell, there's no dents, dings, anything else. It's really dirty on the bottom half, but I think it'd be, it would be acceptable to take off two points on finish for this one. But again, it's not a condition issue. All right, engine color. See, here we go. Told you it was coming. So you'll notice, here's the engine. It doesn't look like this right now. There's actually less stuff attached right now. But you can see our, they got wild with the blue down here. They actually hit the distributor. They hit the firewall. They hit all the brackets over here. All have been cleaned up at this point. Engine color. Nothing on originality. Four on condition. But the comment is what gets me. Engine painted in car. What does that have to do with the condition points? I don't know. Nothing. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Well, it's not obvious anymore. It was pretty obvious that that was true, or touched up, if you will. But again, make your deduction and the comments match. It's one thing to take that and throw it on a line below or in parentheses. It's another thing to make that, if you will, the object of your deduction. Okay? You're right. That, the paint on these valve covers is horrible. Okay? It's, it's missing paint in here. Absolutely is. Okay? I, I have no problem on the condition deduction necessarily, but again, they need to match. The condition, or I should say the deduction and the comment have to flow with each other. And again, the comment is kind of about a left field in a way. I mean, it's true. It's very true, but it has nothing to do with what's going on here. All right, radiator, hoses, clamps, heater hoses, and clamps. So what do we notice about this car? Screw clamps, battery. Yep, that's one. What's the other? Is there a valve that it should not be there? Yep, yeah. exactly. Control valve. Owner inspired shutoff valve. Can anybody guess why he probably did this if you look really close? If you look really close, see the 90 degree bend? It's because the original one, the line to it cracked, so he added his own. 
without the vacuum, it doesn't work. So he added his own, rather than fixing the original, not understanding how the original one worked. Two on originality, two on condition. It says, no GM shutoff valve, non-GM heater hoses, clamps wrong. So how are the comments not correct? There is a GM shutoff valve. Exactly, there is a GM shutoff valve. Extra. The proper one would be added non-GM shutoff <laughs> valve. Bonus. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, no bonus points for this one. It's not like a fire extinguisher. But again, the comments and what you see need to match. But yes, they, I mean, the, the non-GM heater hoses, clamps, yeah, they should be the tower. This is what you would optimally write. Clamps should be tower. All right, ECF system, PCV valve. All right, here's the two ends of the PCV. Crack there. Crack there. Comes in right here. Now, does anybody notice anything about the front of the carburetor? Other than the dirt. We talked about the dirt already. Is there a missing hose? As judged, the hose was lying here on top of the radiator. So uh, for ECS system, paint on hose, PCV, paint on hose, and end split. Now the interesting thing is he gets one in originality here and one in condition, and only one in condition here. But yet there's more comments for the second line. And, the extra, and they didn't comment whatsoever on the fact that the installation was entirely incorrect. So my assumption, that's a big word, is that they may have taken a point off for the bad installation. But again, there's no comment. And, I mean, or was the paint on hose, was that the originality? And that's why I got the point? We don't know. The judges didn't write it. And actually, condition that hose, other than the paint, is in very nice condition. So technically, I'm not sure where condition deduction would have been taken on that particular hose. The condition item, as you saw, <coughs> is on this one over here. All right, chassis. Uh, two different sections, mufflers and front springs. So what do we notice about both? Basically the same thing is occurring in both. In both cases, you can even see this is all black here. <coughs> front spring has all been painted black. You've got added black paint or is paint over rust. Okay? Both the back of this is pretty crusty. I was working on it yesterday. But again, getting back to consistency, same team, same deduction, comments. However, mufflers get two on condition, front springs get one and one. Well it's a finish issue and but again is it a condition issue because you know there's rust underneath. Different ways you could go on it. But again what I'm getting at here is lack of consistency. I would put it, like I said, as an originality because it's a, it, it, in my point of view, it's a finish issue. Somebody added paint, okay? You can't see the original. It's, it's not the original black. Well, and my goodness, sure isn't the original finish on the clamps. And sure isn't the original finish on the springs, okay? It's no different than if somebody cast blasted this thing, in a way. Several other chassis items follow, show deductions and originality for overspray, as well as for paint over rust. So then they went back to being consistent the entire rest of the sheet, okay, until this one. And where's the deduction taken for the rusty? <laughs> On originality. So to get back, again, originality, configuration, date, completeness, installation, finish. Condition, rust and corrosion as we talked about, wear cracks, damage fading, scuffs, dents, scratches, pitting. And again, same comments as before, originality is not rust or corrosion, wear, aging, cracks, damage, fading, scuffs, dents, scratches, or missing paint. Condition is not overspray, missing pieces, backwards, cast blast, dirt, or service replacement. Questions? Thoughts after going through? Again, it's just, these are the things that hit me we rarely have somebody actually go through our judging sheets, I hate to say like a teacher would, but almost like a teacher would, and say, all right, this is my interpretation, this is what's right, this is what's wrong, give you a grade, so to speak. Um, but I saw the opportunity, came to Gary a few months ago and said, would you mind if I give a presentation just to show our judges uh, sort of a grading, if you will, one of the cars that went through the system at the chapter meet. Late <laughs> I think his presentation was spot on in that 
you know, if you've got an original car and a judge is saying that perhaps uh, this is this, this doesn't jive with what the manual says, I wouldn't be hurrying home to change it to comply with the manual. I mean, it was written by a human based on some information that he might have gotten secondhand or whatever, and so... Your car will be judged appropriately? <laughs> no, seriously, uh, it is, uh, you know, the judges do a fantastic job with what they're given and so forth, and I, and I can attest that when I had my car flighted uh, at the chapter level um, and then took it to a national, had a national, there was probably only maybe two, three points difference between a chapter level judging and a national judging. So they they do do a pretty good job. I have to hand it to them. So uh, be gentle with them. And uh, they'll be gentle with you. So. Well, thanks for everybody coming here. And, uh, I, I, and especially to Pat, this was really great from two perspectives. One, as an owner who's having your car judged, you know how to behave. And also as those of us that serve as judges, especially at the chapter level, uh, to be consistent with our observations and our critique. So, and, uh, you know, I think that the reason like Gary can make the claim that he just did about how his, you know, going to the national level judging and finding it consistent, that's really a testimony to the caliber of the chapter judging that he had done. Mm -hmm. And I think we're really blessed that we've got some very knowledgeable people in this organization, especially in this chapter, that can do very uh, you know, exquisite, there's a lot of knowledge among the membership here. So. You know, you'll be, you know, get involved with the people. Find out who knows those cars well when you're restoring your car, so you can proceed with uh, deliberation and knowledge. So you don't get any surprises. So.